Welcome to part nine of Razor Eye Reviews Batathon. And this part is going to be a special midweek instalment. Uh, Monday's instalment and part will be up as normal. Uh, but this is just to kind of kick off the animated movies. So this is the Batman animated movies volume one. That's right. I'm going to be doing all the Batman animated movies. I just couldn't do them all in one video. There's just too many of them. So. We're going to be doing is we're going to be going through them in chronological order. I don't have the DVDs of them, which is a shame. And I almost held off on doing these anime movies until three weeks when I'd be able to buy them because you can get them dirt cheap on Amazon. I just don't have the money at the moment. And I really want to hold up a physical copy just to give you more of a feel of the thing, but I, I just couldn't. And it would mean doing Batman Begins and The Dark Knight now. And I want to do them at the end of the marathon, leading into The Dark Knight Rises. So here we are. I'm just going to be talking about them with nothing really. I mean, I've got Batman here and I've got my little. Blu-ray shelf there, but you know, bear with me. Batman, Mask of the Phantasm, the first ever Batman animated movie. Uh, now this was actually released in the cinemas in 1993, only in America, and it was going to be a straight-to-video release, and then at the last minute Warner Brothers decided that it was good enough they were going to put it in the cinemas, and it didn't do very well, because it was at the last minute, you know, there wasn't much notice, and uh, you know, it just didn't do that well. But it did very well on the home video market, and is actually rated on Rotten Tomatoes as the third best Batman film ever made, period. And uh, you can see where they're coming from, it is, it's a great film. The animation is great, and I'd never really watched the animated series or the, any of the animated movies. Didn't know what I was letting myself in for, but I really, really enjoyed it. Um, actually, I have seen an animated film, I've seen... Where is it? Batman Gotham Knight. But this is like, you know, the 90s kind of... The original Batman animated series that was just huge and I can't wait to actually watch the series at some point but anyway yeah so Mask of the Phantasm the storyline is that there's this mysterious killer in Gotham City who's kind of taken out all these crime bosses and um, because this this killer has kind of got the same appearance as Batman like the big black kind of figure and the mask people kind of think that it's Batman and Batman gets framed and we've seen this before and it's a really cool story and I like the way they explored it in this one and there's a lot of kind of mafia kind of stuff going on in this, which I kind of really enjoyed. And um, Bruce Wayne is voiced by Kevin Conroy, which is awesome. I love Kevin Conroy. And the Joker makes an appearance, voiced by Mark Hamill. Again, brilliant. I love Mark Hamill. And I'm, I'm going to talk about his performance as Joker in depth in another video. I don't want to get too much into it because there's a lot of Mark Hamill in this part <laughs> with all these animated films. So... Yeah, the Joker makes an appearance and we actually kind of see Joker before he was the Joker, but we don't get too much information. I like that. It was just like a boom and then take it out of it, you know. And there's a nice mystery about this film and then this girl called Andrea Beaumont comes back to Gotham City. Then we get loads of flashbacks and we see Bruce Wayne and Andrea Beaumont having this kind of, this romance. And then now she's back in Gotham and like how he feels about that and like looking at the passage of time and how things change and stuff like that. And him just kind of, it was great. It, I really, really enjoyed it. It was very good. Uh, Connie, my fiance, watched this one with me, and uh, we were laughing at the the chemistry between Andrew and Bruce Wayne. It was funny, you know. We, the writing is great. I believe it must have been written by Paul Dini, uh, at least in part. And again, he was on the Kevin Smith podcast, so now I know that Paul Dini is instrumental as a writer for the Batman animated series and animated movies. Uh, so yeah, the writing's great. Animation is awesome. It's kind of like an Art Deco kind of like. Not gothic, but like dark Art Deco. It's just really stylish, really, really cool. A lot of great stuff in this. And yeah, just a really cool story all around. Really enjoyed this one. Uh, very, very strong film. So yeah, again, I'm not going to rate these, but that one was really lived up to the hype of people telling me that it was really, really good. So the next one is the Batman Superman movie, World's Finest. Uh, and this wasn't actually intended to be a movie, I don't think anyway, but it's three episodes of Superman the Animated Series. And it features Kevin Conroy as Batman, Tim Daly as Superman, who now, even after doing this, you know, I've only been watching these animated movies for about a couple of weeks, I already feel like Tim Daly is Superman now in, in terms of animated stuff. And it's three episodes of the Superman Animated Series just edited into an hour-long film, basically. So, and it does feel a bit like a film. And I absolutely love this one. I wasn't expecting anything because it looked like a cheap DVD release kind of thing. But it was awesome. I really loved it. The story 
is that um, Joker is, um, has got this golden dragon, again voiced by Mark Hamill, he's got this golden dragon, him and Harley Quinn have stolen this, this dragon, and it's made out of kryptonite, and he, he plans to kill Superman to get a billion dollars from Lex Luthor. And Lex Luthor's, you know, he's in a powerful position, he's like, I can't be attached to this, and Mark Hamill's like, or the Joker, sorry, it's like, yeah, you don't, you, you don't need to be involved, I'll kill Superman, you give me a billion dollars, and he's like, okay then. Bruce Wayne is visiting Metropolis, one, because he, he, he turns up at the crime scene when the dragon's been stolen, and he, and he realises that the dragon's been made out of kryptonite, so he goes to Metropolis to see what's going on, but also under the pretense of Bruce Wayne meeting Lex Luthor for a business deal, because they're developing these these robots that will help demand, uh, unmanned space missions and stuff, like robots that go around terrain and pick up stuff and whatever. Uh, and so Bruce Wayne meets Lex Luthor and, and he's like, oh yeah, these robots are great. And Lex Luthor's like, yeah, and we could use these on the battlefield. And Bruce Wayne's like, no, I don't like guns, no chance. So Lex Luthor's pissed off at Bruce Wayne as well. And then Lois Lane is involved as well. Her and Clark Kent, they, they see Bruce Wayne getting off the plane when he arrives in Metropolis and Lois Lane's like, oh, Bruce Wayne, he's probably just a... You know, just a billionaire, just arrogant, and then she's like, wow, it's gorgeous. And then she's just like besotted with him. And there we go, they're laughing, as we always have in these videos, always background noise, I apologize for that. And yeah, so Lois Lane has a bit of a rom romance with Bruce Wayne, they almost start dating immediately, which I found hilarious. Uh, and then, of course, Batman and Superman, it's not long before they meet up, and I love what they did with this. They, they get in a, a bit of a scuffle in a club. Everyone leaves, it's just Batman and Superman. And Superman looks at the, the Batman, and he uses his x-ray vision to take the mask off, and he's like, Bruce Wayne? And, uh, and Batman's like, you peaked, and then leaves and stuff, and I just thought that was brilliant, that, you know, Superman was just like, okay, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna see what it is, you know? I love that. And then Superman, he, he gets back to his apartment, he takes off his robe, he phones Lois Lane, and then he notices something blinking on his cape, he's like, what the? Picks it up, it's a little bat, bat symbol, it's blinking. And he's like, he looks out the window, and you just see this kind of cape, flying in the distance on top of a building and Superman's like, what's that there? And he zooms in and there's Batman with a pair of binoculars and he just goes, <laughs> that is, is brilliant, I absolutely love that. And Superman's like, touche, you know, it's <laughs> brilliant. The chemistry between the two was awesome, just how Batman and Superman should be done. Again, I know nothing in terms of Batman and Superman teaming up or being against each other. I've heard it over the years in terms of comics and proposed movies. This is the first time I really saw it and I just loved the way they did it. They kind of save each other throughout the film, like Batman saves Superman, Superman saves Batman, and they're kind of like, there's like a kind of a, a bit of a jealous grudge there between them, and now they know who they are, and Lois Lane as well. Uh, but they kind of respect each other more towards the end, and then Joker and Harley Quinn and Lex Luthor all get involved in a big finale, and I thought it was brilliant, you know. I mean, it's not Mask of the Phantasm great because it wasn't designed to be like a movie kind of thing, but. And you can tell as well that it's like episodic, like there'll be a little tiny cliffhangers and stuff, but obviously there's no credits, it just keeps going for an hour. But I absolutely love this one, definitely recommend it. And the next film is Batman and Mr. Freeze Sub-Zero. Uh, this is a director video uh, animated feature, and it was made to be a director video animated feature. And it was going to be released around the same time as Batman and Robin, but when Batman and Robin wasn't received very well... <laughs> They decided to delay it a bit just to distance themselves from it, just a little bit, because it is, again, a Mr. Free story. And the film opens, actually, the big Batman logo, and it goes all frozen and stuff. And it's music from either Batman Forever or Batman and Robin, so it looked like they were trying to like link it in with the film, but then they just kind of stopped, because <laughs> the rest of the film wasn't like the, at the films at all. But anyway, so the story is, opens up with Mr. Freeze, he's swimming in the Antarctic, and he's got his wife, Nora Freeze, there, and she's in like this containment tank, frozen, or well, not frozen, but kind of looking suspended animation. You know the story, and I love the Mr. Freeze story, I love the Mr. Freeze character. And it was great to see him done more seriously than in Batman and Robin. I should just slap myself every time I say Batman and Robin. And um, yeah, so at the beginning of the film, this, this submarine, it kind of surfaces in the cave that he's keeping her in, in the Antarctic, trying to find a cure. And her, her containment vessel, it breaks. And you're like, oh god, what's going on now? And he's also, he's also kind of adopted this little Inu Inuit boy, which I think is kind of placed there so you so that the audience or at least the kids know that he's a he's kind of got a a good heart really, and that's what again what I love about Mr. Freeze's character. So um, Bruce Wayne and Dick Grayson, he's in this. Uh, Robin's in this. Interesting how Robin is basically Batman in this, just a little bit smaller. Like he's still ridiculously hench like Batman. That's the thing, Batman in the animated series, he's just got like the broadest shoulders of, in the universe. And there's like a massive chest and then it slowly caves down into like a normal body. And Robin in this film, exactly the same, absolutely massive. 
only just a little bit shorter than Bruce Wayne. Uh, Barbara Gordon's in this, Batgirl as well. And she's kind of the main part of the story because she gets kidnapped by Mr. Freeze. Mr. Freeze, he, he brings Nora Freeze back to Gotham to try and save her. She's got only a few weeks to live. Um, now she's outside of this, this vessel that he made for her. So he, helps, he gets his doctor to help him and the doctor's like, well, you know, we need to like do a donate uh, a donation. We need to do a we need an organ donor <laughs> donation. We need an organ donor, but uh, there's no one on the list. And Mr. Freeze is like, "Well, find someone who's alive then." And he's like, well, "You know what that means?" And he's like, "I don't care what it means." And I kind of like get that, you know, like if if Connie, my fiance, was like had, had died, but she was there in suspended animation, and there was a possibility I could bring her back to life, I probably would do anything and go to any lengths to do it. So it's just a really relatable story to me, a Mr. Free story. And it turns out Barbara Gordon is one of the only people who has got the, the same blood type as, as Nora Freeze. And of course they pick Barbara Gordon and they kidnap her and there's this great chase scene and Robin gets like a little great escape moment on his, on his motorbike. I really enjoy this one and the whole end of the film takes place in this oil rig. Really cool setting and it just was just a really, I really enjoyed the ending as well. Just really nice kind of set piece ending. Enjoyed it a lot, only about an hour hour and ten minutes long, most of these films are by the way, but yeah I actually really enjoyed this one, wasn't expecting much, really really cool, and um, yeah, so another thing I should say I guess, Batman in the animated series, just the way he looks and stuff, is really cool, I'd always see pictures of it and think oh it looks a bit weird, but it just works when you're in there and you're watching it and stuff, um, he's just got like the, looks like a really cool sleek black mask and then just the white just, it's just like white eyes, and I really like that look. It's like, it really fits with the whole art direction of the whole show and the movies as well. So next up we go to a movie that's outside of the continuity of Batman the Animated Series, and it's Batman Beyond. Batman Beyond, The Return of the Joker, this was released in 2000. I love this one as well. The, these films are really good. So the story of this one is Batman Beyond. There's a kid called Terry McGuinness or something, I might be wrong. And he's the new Batman, he's got like this, he, he's really like skinny, he's a kid, you know, he's just got like a black suit with a red bat uh, logo, and uh, he can fly as well, he's got like rockets in his feet. And this is in the future now, it's kind of a futuristic Gotham, and he's under the tutelage of Bruce Wayne, who's like in his 80s and stuff. Really like that, and Bruce Wayne's got this dog as well, this big kind of boar hound black, and I really like that aspect as well. I'm pretty sure this is a TV show, uh, another animated show, a spin-off, um, I'm not entirely sure. Um, I'm pretty sure, but yeah. So anyway, so that's the kind of story or the the setting, if you will. And then out of nowhere, the Joker appears, and everyone's like, "Hang on, the Joker which would be like 80 now, and he was killed 40 years ago, or whatever." So that's the whole mystery. Like, well, who's this return of the Joker? And um, it's really cool. And then halfway through the film, Barbara Gordon, who's a commissioner, and I love that as well. She's like an old, graying, you know, Commissioner Gordon. I love that, and she explains to Terry. Um, why Robin and Batman had this big, this big, uh, you know, they never saw each other again and all that kind of stuff, and why the, the Joker thing is, is playing on his Bruce Wayne's mind. And she tells this great backstory, and it's like a big scene of the film as well, quite a big chunk of it, that features um, Batman, Batgirl, um, Robin going to Arkham Asylum and confronting the Joker and Harley Quinn. Brilliant scene, I just, it was just, it was awesome, and I guess. There's no point in me trying not to spoil anything. What happens is, Joker kidnaps Robin and turns him into a mini Joker. Like he brainwashes him over a couple of weeks and Robin is just turned into this little Joker kid. And Joker and Harley Quinn have got their own son. Now again, I'm not sure if Batman Beyond is basically supposed to be set in the same continuity as Batman the Animated Series just like 40 years in the future. Because when you go back into the flashback and you see Batman and Batgirl and Robin, Batman who's Barbara Gordon, who then goes on to be Commissioner Gordon by the way. Um, Robin's like really, like, he looks like a, an 11 year old. Whereas in, again, the last film, Batman and Mr. Freeze Sub-Zero, Robin's like massive and hench and in his 20s or whatever. Or well, he looks like that anyway. So he's a little kid in Batman Beyond when they go back, so I'm not sure what continuity it is. But Batman looks exactly the same, again voiced by Kevin Conroy. Mark Hamill again voices the Joker. Who, uh, this might be my favourite Mark Hamill appearance as Joker I think so far. Uh, I just, you know, I haven't seen all the animated series stuff, the episodes, but it was really like a little bit more dark, like a little bit more sinister, you know, again, turning Robin into a mini Joker and stuff, and his laugh, and it was just really, really good. 
and then the ending we kind of find out what was going on there's like of course the mystery and stuff and that was good and it was done well it felt a little bit forced at the end like the, the big reveal of why the joker is there 40 years in the future i felt like uh, that's a bit of a cop out like they've been building up so it's like how is this going to turn out and then it's like oh, let's just do this you know and it, it worked for the story and everything and i enjoyed the ending but um it was kind of like well it's a bit far-fetched but overall i absolutely loved it one thing i really liked was the, there was like a, a gang of like kids who did like the jokers or the joker in the future or in the present in terms of batman beyond these kids were like doing his dirty work and there's this one kid who looked, looked a bit like a scarecrow and he just like talked exactly like Christopher Walken. It was just really weird, <laughs> but I loved it. Uh, and then finally, the fifth and final in this this volume, this compendium of reviews, is Batman: The Mystery of the Batwoman. This was released in two thousand and three, so it's kind of the tail end of kind of all that stuff. And uh, it features Batwoman, who is this mysterious Batwoman who's going around Gotham, and she's um, fighting against the Penguin who was seen in this as the penguin was originally envisioned in, envisioned yeah envisioned as um just a big fat kind of uh you know uh, pompous kind of guy like the, he hasn't got the, the flippers and stuff and i never realized that that was kind of an invention of tim burton in batman returns that the penguin was originally just like a pompous guy with a monocle you know a big fat guy who looked a bit like a penguin and in this film, you know, and there's none of the Burgess Meredith stuff like the waddling and the, you know, the whack, whack, whack and all that stuff. Just like a, it's just a normal guy. Well, not even not normal, he's an evil guy, but you know. And he brings Bane in as well as kind of a bit of muscle power. And Bane was like, yeah, this weird kind of accent. Again, I don't really know the history of Bane, don't really care either. <laughs> Bane's not a favourite character of mine, although he might be after The Dark Knight Rises. We'll see. So, yeah, the story of this is bat there's a Batwoman. And she's taken out. Uh, or she's going after the penguin so Bruce Wayne's like hmm who's this Batwoman and he he meets this girl and he kind of goes on a date with her and stuff well he doesn't go on a date with her they just end up going out together to this place and he's like oh she's the Batwoman and then he finds out there's this other girl who might be the Batwoman and he's like hang on a minute are these two in it together and then it's like you know, you're like well, what's going on here and it was really well done I enjoyed it um, but it felt a bit like it just didn't have the the feel of the, uh, the, of the other films like it didn't have the art direction was good, but I mean, it just it just didn't feel like the other ones really. And again, just even a simple thing like the end credits, you know, there was no atmospheric Batman kind of music. It was like some kind of pop song by this, you know, this this pop singer. And I was just like, oh, that was a bit weird. It doesn't really fit for a Batman film. I wasn't really a big fan of that. Um, overall, it was good, but um, not the best. You know, I'd probably only give it like about six out of ten. Oops, I rated a film then. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it was, it was alright, you know, I'd watch it again, it was good, it was enjoyable, but nowhere near the level of the other four, you know. And I guess you could say the other three, because the Batman Superman movie is, is not really a movie, but it is, and I really enjoy that. I don't know. I, I loved all of them, apart from the Batwoman, Mystery of the Batwoman, which is just okay. So, next part we'll be talking about the DC Original Universe Animated Movies. I'll probably got that wrong, but that's what they call it. It's like this continuity where they've started releasing, DC have started releasing uh, straight to DVD and Blu-ray animated movies around about an hour long and um, they've been doing it since around 2008 I believe and they've done Superman ones, Green Lantern ones, Justice, Justice League ones, Wonder Woman ones and they've done Batman ones so I'm going to be talking about all the Batman ones and all the Justice League ones and all the Superman and Batman ones, they've done those that a series of that as well so there's a lot to talk about in the next volume, which will be out on Monday as usual. So thank you for watching, and uh, yeah, I'll see you next week or well, next Monday. Same bad time, same bad channel, and all that jazz. And yeah, Batman animated movies are pretty good, surprisingly. Funny story actually. Uh, Kevin Smith, director of Clerks, James Silent Bob, uh, Stroke Back, um, Red State more recently. He's made loads of films. Dogma, one of my favourites. Um, he does loads of podcasts. He's got this podcast website with just like hundreds. But he does one called Fat Man on Batman where he talks about Batman. Or more specifically, he talks with someone who was involved in Batman's history. And uh, two of those podcasts, which were both 90 minutes long, was a huge interview with Mark Hamill who plays the Joker in most of the animated movies and series and the games, Arkham City and so on. And Mark Hamill had this funny story about Mask of the Phantasm. It was released on Christmas Day in 1993, 
and Mark Hamill took his kids and his, his wife to see the film in the cinema and he said, I'm not kidding, there was like eight people there. And I was like, hey, come on, you know who I am, come on, let's, let's watch this. And they all sat with Mark Hamill and watched the film, which is kind of like an awesome story. But uh, yeah, obviously it didn't do too well in the cinemas.